Love and Light. This is LA Talk Show for Monday, November 4th, 2019. I'm Robert. And I'm Marissa. Show notes will be over at healthytalkshow.com forward slash 30. On this episode of Healthy Talk Show, we have an update on swine fever and two climate change studies you probably haven't heard about. But first... 18-year-old high school student Nicholas Godfrey shared a direct message on Instagram, allegedly trying to hire a hitman. This is, I quote, I need a guy who could kill someone. Another quote was, we have $100,000 for the victim's head. And a third quote was, no joke, I need him eliminated as soon as possible. The threatening note reportedly targeted a faculty member at 5A High School located north of Tampa. Yeah, $100,000, this kid loaded. He's got a lot of money. Jeez, uh, over what, some grades? Let's see. (laughs) A student received the message from the 5A fan club account used by Godfrey, which deputies say was intercepted by a school resource officer. Detectives say what Godfrey thought was a joke got him in jail. Wait. That's what struck me about the report. Yeah, now I'm confused. Yeah. Okay, I'm glad I wasn't crazy. I only listened to this thing once. I I didn't want to listen to it again because I was thinking... I wonder if I'll catch it again. Yeah. But okay, so we're on. Yeah. So he thought it was a joke, but okay. Yeah, now I'm confused. Yeah. It doesn't matter if somebody says I was joking. It doesn't matter what their intent is when you do it and you post it out there on social media, you committed that crime. According to court documents, a search warrant for the Instagram account revealed an IP address registered to Godfrey's home. During an interview, he admitted to the crime and was booked at the Pasco okay. County Jail on $10,000 oh, bond. Yeah. Authorities say the high school senior didn't have a disciplinary record before this, but is now charged with solicitation oh my to God. attempt oh, yeah. murder. Tonight, the school district telling NBC News expulsion will be recommended. Oh, okay. Oh, my God. What the... I want to hear his side of the story. Yeah, there's some. It's, I'm, yeah, this is kind of yeah weird. And you know, I always tell people if you're gonna commit crime on the internet, use a freaking VPN, <laughs> or just use a VPN if you're just gonna be on the internet yeah, in general. Yeah, just use it. Just use but it. But especially internet. if you're gonna commit crime, use a VPN, please. Just use yeah, a VPN. we recommend private internet access. Yeah, that's what but, we use to commit know. all of our internet crime. <laughs> No, hey, I don't trust the internet. Y'all are dirty out there. Yeah, it's true. The <laughs> VPN is basically a condom. It protects you. It protects your IP address. Your IP address is so valuable. So valuable. That's how you're tracked through your IP address. It's the, one yeah. of the easiest ways to track people. Don't get tracked. As you see in this report. But that's very strange. That so What, do you think it was a joke? Yeah. $100,000 is a lot. Why would you post that on Instagram if you're seriously looking for a hitman? Are you going to really post that on Instagram? Is that where people look for hitman <laughs> or hit people or whatever the correct term would be? Yeah, I doubt that's where you go. <laughs> CBS News. Common Sense Media issued the report. The research finds that 56% of children between the ages of 8 and 12 and 69% of 12 to 18 year olds are watching online videos every day. That is is up from 24 and 34 percent, respectively, back in 2015. And so this is sort of interesting. The survey also found that overall average of screen time over the past four years actually hasn't changed. So I take it that they're just using the t- their regular screen A lot of screen time. Yeah. <laughs> screen time. I guess it would have been TV and sort of years gone by, and they're switching over to their various devices. Yeah, that, that's basically it. I mean, screen time has remained fairly level. You see lots of like little increases in things like gaming and video and social media and stuff like that, but nothing dramatic. But the, the how of how they're doing it has changed quite a bit. So it's much more mobile, much more personalized, much more individualized than it was mobile. in the past. Yeah. So instead of watching TV, kids are watching their cell yeah. phones now, which is not, which is probably worse. <clears throat> I, yeah. I mean, it's a lot of time. Well, on one hand, I don't want to be too hypocritical because we are on twitch so we, yeah. we're, oh, yeah. we're trying to appeal to these well, people in the way that yes. they consume media but that's true absolutely <laughs> but we are an audio podcast too that's true healthytalkshow.com slash podcast let us know if you're listening on the audio only we're curious yeah please a lot of people do people but don't like the video i'm also curious how this is changing you know the use brain or even as a as a teacher i notice mm-hmm. that people just want to watch videos of things instead of just sitting down with the textbook. And sometimes I, I don't think that helps their attention span because mm. sometimes you just need to sit with the problem and think. Yeah. At least 
I don't know. That's, That's how I feel. Prob- you're probably correct. I'm old fashioned. Let us know. Ask at HealthyTalkShow.com. In this report, there was kind of a weird exchange between the reporter and the... It's kind... Let's just listen. I thought it was kind of weird. I've been kind of waiting with dread to talk to you because I have an eight-year-old daughter and I admit the phone is never very far from her. And I also admit, you know, I kind of use it just to kind of keep her busy from time to time. So I might fall right in line. It's a little self-aware, very self-aware. Yeah. <laughs> but, but. In line with the statistics. Don't judge me. Kind of a problem. Well, how many parents are guilty yeah, of this? I, I know. Um, so, Michael, what is driving this increase in online video watching um, from teens and tweens? And, and what does that tell us? You know, my mother's always on me about the screen time that my uh, child, you know, enjoys, that she, it's too much, and blah, blah, blah. And I try to tell her, well, you know, it's, it's different times. And uh, I watch TV. She's she's watching the screen. But, I, you know, I said don't judge me in sort of a playful way, but I kind of do feel a little judged. A lot of the other parents that I know <laughs> have a list of regulations. My kid only gets, you know, the the phone on the weekend or we've got a timer on the phone or all that sort of thing. Yeah, that's, that's some kind of, like smart habit. Yeah, that's good <laughs> control points. Yeah. yeah, you are the parent. You <laughs> yeah. should take control. Yep. <laughs> Pry the phone away from my kid's hand, quite frankly. So tell me. That is a problem. You cannot yeah. pry the phone away from your kid's hand. So, <laughs> your kids are addicted. I'm sorry. Yep. Me. What can I do as a parent to make sure that she has a Take healthy balance? Take away the balance? phone. Yeah, it's real easy. Take away the phone and say, I'm the parent. Yeah. Shut up. Um, comes with these devices. Because she also learns a lot using the devices as well. Really? No, really? My, my response to this is, do you want Alexa teaching your child? Yeah. That's right. But that's the other thing. I mean, and that's also the flip side of YouTube is that there's actually a lot of really good content out there too. Do you- well, besides healthy talk show, I really don't know what other kind of good content there is on YouTube, but okay. <laughs> Yourself videos, uh, learning videos, lots of opportunities to, um, you know, get involved in educational content that you might not otherwise be exposed to. Uh, but it's, you know, I would say don't, don't make yourself feel guilty and try to focus on the things that you know are good for child development. Mm-hmm. So getting a good night's sleep, Getting good nutrition, what? playing with friends. Yeah, he doesn't address the screen thing at all. Yeah, he. It's really that funny. Was a totally yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, cop out. I love it. Um, <laughs> playing with toys, um, doing your homework. If you can make sure that your kids are doing the things that you know are good and right for child development, then you don't have to worry about counting every single screen minute. Um, and then you know, try to push yourself. Push was your she listening? Kids toward a good content. I don't There's think lots so. Of good stuff out there. Yeah. And even if you can't watch yep. over their shoulder yep. all the time, ask them what they're watching at the dinner table. I, well, that was that, hilarious. That's assuming that people are sitting down at the dinner table, too. Yeah. I don't know that all families have that luxury. No. Time. Yeah. Time is the issue. We all need to relax a little. Slow down. Less screen time. Yep. More time together. Today. There's some of the 9 million young people between the ages of 12 and 25 who reported using marijuana in the past month. By January, consuming weed recreationally over the age of 21 will be legal in 11 states and Washington, D.C., and more states are considering it. But some medical studies link frequent marijuana... They don't actually cite any studies. They just say oh, some. You know, use some sorry. I just think it's funny that they say kids' cannabis and new concerns... People have always been concerned about kids. <laughs> yeah, and cannabis. <laughs> Young people to deficits in attention, memory, and IQ, even a greater risk of psychosis. Health officials Wait, are on what is with the psychosis? It is a psychosis thing. They even... Every time I hear people talk about weed, oh, now I cut out psychosis. The, I cut out the psychosis. whole interview with the young children or the young college age kids talking about oh i don't get the psychosis though because i smoke lower dose you don't what the, the hell the psych- are you talking about the psychosis means something else that i'm yeah. not aware of you, what are you talking about you don't get this what? yeah what <laughs> how Which, do you know <laughs> what hot smokers are you talking yeah. to i alert because the young brain is still developing until the age of 25 mm-hmm. my message is simple no young person should be using marijuana period wait period. Wait, Stop. wait vice ad yep Please tell me they're going to address alcohol. Oh, no. Just marijuana. Oh, okay. No young okay. person should be using marijuana. Alcohol is fine. Tobacco yeah, is cool. Fine. Tobacco is cool. That's Use cool tobacco. For, your, for your young developing yeah. brain. Yep. Merle Jerome Adams is the U.S. Surgeon General. He took the rare step in August of issuing an advisory, the third of its kind in 13 years. It's become normalized. It's become accepted. And people think it's less dangerous. 
But unfortunately, it's more dangerous than ever. This is not your mother's marijuana. It's not your Um, mother's marijuana, Marissa. Didn't you know? Didn't we hear this in the last... We hear this all the time. (laughs) This is... It's the same talking point. This isn't your mother's marijuana. Let's see why. How is it not my mother's marijuana? Psychosis? Psychosis? Nope. Meaning that it is more potent. It's more potent, but it's Man, she looked excited. And gummy bears... And Wait, oil. gummy bears. They're in gummy bears. Hold on, Gus. So Gotta why is this so scary? I'm going to go back. Why is it so dangerous? And chocolates and gummy bears and oils, these new forms that can deliver an even higher concentration, and you have more danger. You have more danger. Uh, higher concentration, more like danger. falling asleep? Yeah. You have a higher danger of falling asleep. And being high for a long time? I don't know. <laughs> you know, there are... There are real legitimate concerns, though, going on with the a lot of synthetic marijuana I've been hearing about. Well, that's synthetic. That's, though, stay that's, away from that shit. That's kids. Different. If it doesn't grow, doesn't yeah. grow, don't don't smoke it. <laughs> Just ask the old hippies where to get the good stuff. Yep, that's they'll, right. They'll teach you the truth. Yep. <laughs> Associated Press scientists say a quarter of all pigs could die of swine fever. Around a quarter of the world's pigs are expected to die from African swine fever as authorities grapple with a complex disease spreading rapidly in the globalization era, the World Organization for Animal Health president said Thursday. A sharp reduction in the world's pig population would lead to possible food shortages and high pork prices, and it might also cause shortfalls in the many products made from pigs, such as the blood thinner heparin that's used in people, said Dr. Mark Shipp, the organization's president. The price of pork has nearly doubled from a year ago in China, which produces and consumes two-thirds of the world's pork. And China's efforts to buy pork abroad, as well as smaller outbreaks in other countries, are pushing up global prices. Interesting. We've been talking about swine fever yeah, what's, since for a while. And no one else is really reporting on it. Yeah, it's very um, sad. Yeah. It's uh, found. Well, it's pretty interesting, too, because we were looking into some of the politics behind it. And some people are seeing this as a great business opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) So apparently U S producers were ramping up pork exports. So maybe you heard that there's a lot of bacon. Yeah. Sitting around. But I guess the Chinese want the whole cut, the whole pig, not our cut pig. How how would we not know that? (laughs) It really weird. I don't know how we messed that one up. It's very poorly reported and not really quite pieced together. It's one of those yeah. things we'll learn about a year from now and say, ah, that's what happened, and no one will talk about it. Yeah. It's really but strange. if you see your, your bacon prices going up, even though people might be reporting excess bacon, because yeah. everyone's trying to get those high prices. What are we going to do? Run to beef? NBC Nightly News. A warning tonight about a deadly salmonella outbreak linked to ground beef. The CDC is investigating, but they don't know yet where it started. The agency also says the illnesses are more severe than expected. Kathy Park on what you need to know to protect your family. Tonight, at least 10 people in these six states have been infected with a serious strain of salmonella after eating ground beef. The CDC reports the outbreak killed one person and sent eight to the hospital. Numbers that health officials say are unusually high. There are multiple strains of salmonella, and the one that appears to be linked to this outbreak is considered one of the more virulent ones, which means that it's more likely to enter the bloodstream, which increases the risk, unfortunately, of dying from it. Invest- That's very unfortunate. Yeah. Jeez Louise. Investigators haven't zeroed in on a single source or brand, but the majority of people who got sick reported eating ground beef bought from different stores. Patients were mostly men and between 48 and 74 years old. If you're somebody watching this tonight and you're over the age of 65 or young children at home or your immune system may be compromised, you might want to consider waiting until this outbreak is over before consuming ground beef. The CDC is not advising retailers to stop selling ground beef or consumers to stop eating it, but recommends refrigeration within two hours after purchase, cooking the meat until the internal temperature reaches 160 <laughs> degrees. Good, good thing we used our meat thermometer. Other items yep. that may have come into contact with raw ground beef. The basic stuff. Use a meat yeah. thermometer, though, like you were saying. Please, everyone, meat thermometers yeah. are the best, especially if you like your meat rare. You don't know. You cannot tell by looking at it. Yeah. Bull crap. You cannot tell by looking at it. You need to test it. It feels Probe like it. there's always a salmonella outbreak every so often. Yeah, it's not. So just just get a 
thermometer. <laughs> yeah. ABC News. It's a cutting edge car that wow. has some concern. Some do you like that? Can we, can we do that one more time? I liked it too. I cut out most of it, but I liked oh. it so much because it, it, it played before his vocals. So I had to cut, you know, because yeah. I'm always trying to cut these clips down for everyone's time. Yeah, let's watch that one, one more time. time. One more time. It was great. It's a cutting edge car that has Bam. some concern. Dang, some don't put that together. Have gone up in flames, and this morning, federal safety officials are looking into a possible cause after receiving uh, a battery. petition from a plaintiff's attorney in a proposed class action lawsuit. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration sending a request to Tesla asking for information Ooh. on reported fires and consumer. Yeah. Wait, haven't we reported how consumers are supposed to keep hush hush? On these sorts of Tesla issues? Yes, this is a problem. Oh, okay. That's not, probably not legal. Oh, this, this <laughs> could get interesting. Yeah. But they, yeah. Consumer complaints covering eight years of the car oh. company's mm -hmm. Model S and Model X vehicles, and specifically concerning their lithium ion batteries. Those batteries, the power source for these electric cars, and we've seen instances of them sparking up before. Last yeah. March, a oh crash involving Tesla's autopilot led to this car bursting into flames. And after the crash, at an impound lot, the battery reignited almost a week later. Oh, yeah. Last oh, June, yeah. Almost a week later, the battery that's, reignited. That's called lithium metal, baby. <laughs> no, that's safe, though. I'm going to put those wall, those wall batteries on my house. They're, they're safe. Oh, yeah. The wall packs. What are those called? The Tesla crap. What are they called? I used to know all their product names. Yeah. The wall battery. <laughs> actress Mary McCormick posting this video of her husband's Model S saying it caught fire out of the blue. And in December, another Model S oh flaring gosh. up as it was towed for a flat tire. Then six hours later, after firefighters put those flames out, it ignited once again. Yep. Multiple federal <laughs> investigations. Oh, yeah, that's what happens. That's lithium ion batteries. Hello. That's uh, oh, don't worry. An alkali metal. That's, that's what happens. Yes. <laughs> had already been launched into Tesla and the safety of its cars. Those doors are sick, though. Have you seen how those doors work? Those yeah. gold wings? I thought somebody said they don't last. Yeah, they suck. They break. <laughs> but this probe is specifically centered around an over-the-air software update from earlier oh. this year. They send out these, these signals and, and they update your battery. But the allegations here are it affected the battery's performance in a way that diminished the quality of the battery. While Tesla did not respond okay. to our request. For Hang on. No one is disturbed that what? Tesla is somehow changing your battery. Oh, yeah, like they did for, was it Harvey? Hurricane Harvey, where yes. they extended the range of the battery by sending out an update so that people can get away from the flood, which is cool that they did that. But wait a second, I own this car. Why isn't the battery, or why don't I yeah. have the control over that? Why can't I do that? If it's yeah. more stressful, let me make that decision. I bought the car. I'm buying the battery. Yeah. So now I'm, I'm really curious. Yeah. It's Tesla. For comment on this investigation, the company has previously referred to Ooh. these types of fires as extraordinarily unusual and said in the U.S. Uh -huh. a gas car is more likely what? to experience Do they have fire. some data for that? Well, I think if you looked at the number of Teslas on the road compared to every other gas car on the yeah. road, I'm fairly certain it would be a much higher percentage of Teslas. Yeah, I don't remember mm. hearing about gas cars ever catching on fire. That's just, that's the, Not like the Tesla. that's Tesla. That's their, that's their mentality. Oh, yeah. That's how they think. Although those were those Fords that caught on fire. The Pintos? That was a long time ago. And those had yeah. to be rear-ended. Thank you very much. They did not, <laughs> is, but if they were just rear-ended, they would. Oh, poof. yeah. I wish I had a video. Well, that was a flaw in what the gas tank place. Yeah, I believe it was yeah. a gas tank location. Something like that. Great yeah. cars though. Well, let's see some tats. All right. RT. Tats. <laughs> According to a new report from the non-profit organization Break Free from Plastic, it gained the disturbing accolade based on hundreds of cleanup operations in over 50 countries. Researchers say they counted almost 12,000 pieces of plastic produced by oh. Coca-Cola in 37 nations. That's more than double the runner-up Nestle. It comes to... That is a lot of pieces of plastic. <laughs> I think that's just a testament of how dominant Coca-Cola yeah. is. Yeah, they're a huge brand. Look at them compared uh, to PepsiCo. PepsiCo, come on. You, you don't litter. <laughs> you don't pollute as much as us. 
Despite Coca-Cola's multiple campaigns to create a public image as an environmentally responsible company, on its website, for example, it claims to produce billions of plant-based plastic bottles instead of those produced from petroleum. They also say that they plan to recycle 75% of packaging in developed nations. However, online news site The Intercept obtained a leaked audio recording purportedly from a meeting of a recycling collective in the U.S. city of Atlanta. It apparently reveals that Coca-Cola funded environmental organizations blocked a recycling initiative that would be too costly for the company. What? <laughs> yeah, more on I oh, haven't man. found anything else on that, but it is pretty funny. The intercept reporting that yeah. is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, plastic. Uh, Why can't we just use those glass Coke bottles? Yeah, they're great. Yeah. The glass Coke bottles are fantastic. You look cool with the glass Coke all the commercials are all the, all the cool ones? Yeah. They have the glass Coke bottles. That's the polar true. bears, all of them are going to have the glass ones because nobody wants the plastic ones are shitty. They look like crap. Yeah. You want the glass ones. Can you do a two liter glass one though? Mm, that'd be a cool looking bottle. AskHealthyTalkShow.com. Let me know. CBS This Morning. The report shows many major coastal cities around the world could be underwater by 2050 in our lifetime. Scientists from Climate Central say that means 300 million people would be waterlogged in just 30 years. Take a look at these images. Here are the original predictions for 2050. And then these are the Climate Central's new projections. Take a look at the dramatic impact in places like Bangkok, Thailand, Alexandria, Egypt, and closer to home, coastal Louisiana. It shows each area almost completely underwater. Oh, Louisiana is below sea low. Yeah, it's bound to happen. <laughs> yeah. This is a study where I'm waiting for more to come out on it. The problem with this one particularly is what the code is not available. So there's no way to look at how they developed anything. Yeah. <laughs> so we're waiting for someone to pick, <laughs> look at it. Also, no one's actually looking at it right now. They're just, in, they're just yeah. talking about it, but no one's. So oh. we're waiting. It was also funded by Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, Leo, he funded it. So, you know, it's not. Got to star on the show Growing Pains, I think. <laughs> he doesn't have an interest in projecting that. We're all going to be underwater. Yeah. But <laughs> moving on to two climate change studies, which actually have data. Real News Network, the Pentagon's carbon boot print. Boot print. They interviewed, oh, I cut off the person's name. Nita C. Crawford and another person who you'll hear in a second. Uh, your new study found that in 2017, the Pentagon's greenhouse gas emissions were actually greater than the greenhouse gas emissions of entire countries uh, like Sweden or Denmark. What does the Pentagon consume all of these fossil fuels what? for? Uh, and, and how does it produce so That's what their study found. Right. What do they <laughs> consume these fuels for? Huh. Uh, emissions. <laughs> well, quite simply, it's a huge institution and Think of it this way. It's a, like, like a multinational corporation with 500 military bases in the world, uh, many thousands of buildings, not to mention ships, aircraft, uh, tanks, which use enormous quantities of fuel. So uh, one plane can get five gallons per oh, mile. Beautiful. Not miles per gallon. But gall five gallons per mile. Oh my gosh. <laughs> she, st she sets it straight too. No, no. Five gallons per mile. <laughs> oh, you know, that's funny. Because when, I, when I, I looked at that graph in the study... And I didn't realize that it was gallons per mile. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad she. <laughs> yeah, she clarifies it in this interview. Holy. Yeah. Oh, she's cool. If you look her up, she's cool. She's presented this information. It's just the talks, the academic talks are so poorly produced. I can't pull clips because they suck. The uh -huh. audio sucks. So this is the best one, unfortunately. Gallons per mile, if you were thinking in terms of standard fuel economy. So it's quite easy for one of the largest institutions in the world to use that much fuel, especially because they use extremely inefficient, from the perspective of fuel economy, vehicles for transportation. <laughs> so about 70% of their fuel use is for moving things, planes, people, and about 30% is for installations. There you go. Wow. They're not using hybrids. No Priuses out there. Yeah. Moving on to Patrick Bigger, his study was called The Hidden Carbon Cost of the Everything War. Patrick, your study found that if the U.S. military were a country, uh, again, its its fuel usage alone would make it the 47th largest emitter of greenhouse gases in the world. Uh, and your team examined the carbon footprint of the vast network of operations on which the military depends, too. Could you talk a little bit about that? 
Yeah, that's right. Uh, so what we looked at was a somewhat obscure sub-agency called the Defense Logistics Agency and the Sub-Agency for Energy, uh, which is buried in a kind of nondescript office building in Fort Belvoir, Virginia, where they coordinate uh, every gallon of fuel or, or just about every gallon of fuel that we found in our study, uh, sourcing it, procuring it, distributing it, and then ultimately delivering it to its uh, place of consumption all over the world at all those military bases that Nita talked about at domestic and international locations. Uh, and what we found was their primary consumption was in aviation fuel, <laughs> which is the most damaging kind of fuel uh, in terms of greenhouse gas emissions. And Oh, interesting. Yep. I didn't, jet fuel. I didn't realize it was especially bad. That's a lot of jet fuel. Emissions uh, and its contribution to the climate crisis. Yep. Yeah. Crazy. So two studies that actually have hard numbers because it's something you can track. <laughs> but in this clip, tracking the Pentagon is hard. Patrick, just to, to back up or to, to follow up on that, rather, uh, in a piece that you wrote about your new study for the conversation, you say it's no coincidence that the U.S. military emissions tend to be overlooked in climate change studies. It's very difficult to get consistent data from the Pentagon and across U.S. government <laughs> departments. What makes it so difficult? And then how did your team manage to get your hands on that data? Well, I don't know that it's necessarily any more difficult to get your hands on energy data than any other kind of data. It's just that, as we've seen with other eff efforts to audit the Pentagon uh, that have failed miserably, uh, you know, over the last 40 years now and continue to fail. I love that, that he brings that up. Yeah. Because he cannot audit the Pentagon. Awkward. Yep. <laughs> it's really just hard to keep track of how much stuff is consumed by such a sprawling, massive <laughs> uh, institution that has its operations all over the globe and uh, often has an incentive to hide what it's spending uh, in, in on, on different categories and different types of kit. Uh, so what we did was to do a Freedom of Information Act request for every gallon of fuel that the Defense Logistics Agency Energy procured from 2013 to 2017, just to get a snapshot uh, of those purchase records to see kind of uh, what it looked like. And we've not even gone into doing the work of comparing that to what the publicly d available data shows. Uh, but just from our, uh, our, our little FOIA hunt, uh, we think we found some, some pretty interesting data that really shows the extent of the Pentagon's uh, contribution to climate change. And I'm sure they love them with their FOIA requests. Yeah. Oh. Well, it's kind of funny because... Do you have any more clips? Yeah, one more. Just, okay. just to round it off, though, but continue. What's up? Oh, I was, I was going to say, because part of the excuse as mm -hmm. to why we have all these bases everywhere is because we need to be around to police the world. Yeah. However, these same people also say, well, you know, with climate change, there's going to be tons of refugees and wars. So, so that's why we got to be there. Yeah. But if them being there. Which one there, is it? Chicken or the egg? Yeah, is causing it. <laughs> yeah, I like this last one from Nita C. Crawford. The U.S. doesn't intentionally, through its uh, military activities, produce greenhouse gases in order to make the climate worse. It just does what it does, that is, makes war, occupies countries, um, trains, and uh, deploys forces all over the world. Right. And as a consequence, uh, this is what it does. And its um, capacity actually had, uh, um, its emissions have been reduced in most recent years. And in part, it's because they don't like being vulnerable to someone who would like to interfere with the transportation of fuel to a war zone. So they've moved towards decreasing their vulnerability. This is interesting. Yeah. It's just the machine is so big. It's not as though it's some evil machine trying to destroy the planet. It's yeah. just, it's a machine that's out of control, and that's what it is. That's all I have on clips. It's pretty funny. So back to her report, I found a nice quote in there that said, for instance, the Navy created the Task Force Climate Change in 2009. However, the Pan Pentagon does not acknowledge that its own fuel use is a part of the problem, or that reductions in Pentagon fuel use are pot potentially a significant way to reduce the risk of climate change. <laughs> yeah so that was pretty funny and just to put it in a graphical perspective for you so if you're on audio definitely check it out 
So you have this graph of the total U.S. federal government energy consumption. And then right under it, you look at the DOD. So the DOD is really making up most of the U.S. federal energy consumption. According to this graph, yeah. It's (laughs) very interesting to put it in that perspective. They just use a lot of energy. Well, (laughs) when you're talking about gallons per mile, I can see why. (laughs) Precisely. Oh, and and another comparison. Mm -hmm. I think they said that they produce twice as much emissions as all the U.S. cars. But yet we're supposed to, you know, drive around in our electric vehicle. Where are those electric tanks? I want solar-powered tanks. Yeah. (laughs) No, we got to go nuke, baby. Yeah, nuclear-powered tanks. There we go. There's a proposition. Boom. Bam. Bam. But then it's funny because at the... The rest of the interview, they said, well, what should the military do? And one of them said, oh, yeah, we should plant trees and military, <laughs> remove the military, plant trees at the bases. Oh, I said, no, right. how about just, yeah, just back, vacate the buildings? I'm sure people can find uses for the yeah. buildings. It's, we don't need to plant trees there. Let's just get the hell out of there. Yeah. Jeez Louise. <gasps> All right, we good? Ready to move on to our next topic, next heated topic of the yep. evening? Forbes, Bill Maher oh supports vaccine autism connection. Huffington Post. I don't know, Huff Post. Is HuffPo? Huffington Post? I don't know what it's called. Bill Maher says vaccine autism link is not crazy. We don't know shit, according to Bill Maher. Man, wow. You, know, you just throw a cuss word in there and now it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, Bill Maher. Oh, 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 sorry. Bill Maher, known for having his shared se- skepticism of healthcare recommendations and physicians, the people in the white coats, as he refers to them with a pejorative tone, brings up the point that vaccines may play a role in causing autism. Within hours, the Twitterverse, physicians, and mainstream media outlets dug in their heels on this seemingly endless debate. The idea that it should even be a debate is well debatable oh my gosh the writer on forbes it should definitely always be a debate no so i pulled no. some clips that the mainstream they're they not going to play so i pulled a lot of clips from this. it's very oh. interesting so i pulled a lot of clips so okay. i don't even know which clip they're freaking out about because i just listened to the whole thing oh that's funny so dr jay gordon's opening story on vaccines with real time with Bill Maher, whatever the show's called. Some years ago, I was on a show called The Doctor. And I apologize for the poor audio quality. I got a bootleg version because I don't have HBO. I'm sorry if you'd like to hook me up with HBO. <laughs> AskGuiltyTalkShow.com. By the way, thank you for the person who hooked us up with Netflix. Hi. Yes, thank you. We got a free you. Netflix account. Thank you very much. We need more of those. AskGuiltyTalkShow.com. I'm not kidding. Thank you. Which was enjoyable. And I was on with a colleague, a doc I'd known for a long time. And it was a show about a family with seven children, the first four of whom had autism. The next three didn't have autism. And the, the video of their house was, was not fun to watch. And she was pregnant with her eighth child. And there was a spirited discussion. And uh, Dr. Jim Sears, who is a pediatrician on the show, a member of the, the great Sears family of pediatricians, commented, he said, you know, if you were in my practice, I wouldn't vaccinate your eighth child. And everybody applauded. And after the show was over, I walked out to the parking lot with, with my friend, the other pediatrician, good old friend. And he said to me, do you really believe that vaccines cause autism? I said, there's, there's an, an impact. I can't prove anything, so I talked quietly. I said, let me ask you a question. Do you believe that there's no effect from vaccines on the incidence of autism? And he said to me, there might be a very small percentage of children who are adversely affected. And I said, that's all. That's all I'm trying but to say. But you can't say it on TV. They don't, they that's can't not, say it on that, TV. See, this, no. is, this is, say, we're saying it on TV. We are. We're just saying, yes, we're just, and you know, uh, to, to call you this crazy person, I mean, really what you're just saying is slower, right? Yes. Maybe less numbers. And also take into account individuals. Right. People are different. Family history, stuff like that. I don't exactly. think this is crazy. Crazy. Dang, Ooh. we've been saying it. <laughs> Woo, but you can't say it on TV. Yeah. Oh, here's Bill Maher listing examples. That's what I'm saying. I'm not an anti-vaxxer. If I was going to Liberia tomorrow and there was an out- a bowl outbreak, I'd get it <laughs> well, you get Whatever you could get. Of I course. Guess. You give it to yourself, yes. the flu shot. You say, we'll, we'll get to the flu. We'll get to measles. Don't worry. Um, oh. but, <laughs> but here's the thing. Uh... They've been wrong about so much. I object to when doctors, the people in the white coats, 
are like, don't ask any questions about this. When have we ever been wrong? When? Just with me, you drilled mercury into my teeth. It's funny because the Forbes article specifically calls him out on that and says, oh, mercury is proven to be safe in the teeth. But really? Proven to be safe? Mercury? Well, you know, as long as you don't swallow it. I guess. Yeah, that's okay. That's, but keep it as far away from being yeah. swallowed as possible. So probably out of your mouth. <laughs> yeah. uh, you put me on Accutane. Which- they didn't pick up on the Accutane one, though. Oh, the Accutane. The Accutane is legitimate. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody wants to talk about the Accutane one. They all picked apart the mercury filling one, which is, again, debatable. That's fine. But the Accutane, that's something that was pushed heavily. Yeah. Almost on me. And my mom said, no, 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 no. I remember a lot of my friends ended up on it. Mm-hmm. That stuff was. She's one of almost 100 medications that were said safe, safe and effective that had been pulled off the market. Black box warnings. Black box. Black box, black box warnings. That's what they call it. And it's, it's read this before you prescribe or take this medication. You could die. Dang. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right. What do you think? We got, I got a few more clips. Yeah, this is great. Listen. Trans fat scandal. Trans fats. Mm-hmm. Remember 15 years ago? Get that in you. The can't believe it's not butter. Now they it's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Bill Maher's funny. <laughs> <laughs> That scandal, uh, some years ago, when they were trying to find the, the the genesis of heart disease, there were two considerations, sugar and fat. Right. And they paid off Harvard Medical School professors 50 grand to lay the blame at the feet of fat. And right. for a long time, we were told, stay, now, a, a high-fat diet makes you fat. It's not the good food for pyramid you, but it was bullshit. Right. <laughs> Four servings of bread. Excuse me, I don't think any servings of bread are good. <laughs> the people are like, what are you talking about? about bill wholesome wheat look it up <laughs> that's pretty funny he's, yeah he's <laughs> i will say i gained a lot of weight eating bread eating the food pyramid <laughs> yeah i'm sorry i was just following the dietary guidelines <laughs> outdated bread. poster you gotta get that new poster <laughs> Got another interesting scandal. Interesting scandals involve the flu mist, the the nasal flu vaccine. And we promoted that vaccine heavily because there's no needle. It was found that for two years that shot had zero effectiveness, zero efficacy. They pulled it off the market last year and they put it back on the market this year. Kind of we'll see. So there were doctors wandering around the newborn intensive care unit who thought that they had immunity to influenza and they had We just don't. (laughs) <laughs> wow, I missed that one. Ooh, it's... Yeah, it's just, it's so vast. There's so much going on. It's uh, funny. I got three more opinion on vaccines. Here we go. We don't manufacture vaccines as well as we could. We have a schedule that's invariable for every single child. One size doesn't really fit all. Right. The polio vaccine that I would get as a 180 pound man is the same thing that I give to a 12 pound baby. We could do it a lot better. I don't want to bring. I don't want to bring polio back. I don't want to bring measles no, back. Measles is a nasty illness. And we had news in the. Uh, it's interesting you heard today. Yes. Just today, they found out that measles has something called Amnesia. it causes it causes the immune system to forget a lot of the antibodies so it's actually a hard a, a much more harmful disease than we thought it it great new information right we're accepting of new information everyone should be so much there yeah <laughs> Wait, <sighs> so measles what Are yeah reasons? i know it's i hadn't heard it's brand that. new it broke where are yeah, all this, these reports? This, this just no. Them. This just came. This episode oh, just aired two days yeah. ago, so it's oh. all new. And the weekend, no one works on the weekend in the news. It's really hard to find stuff. We'll have to look for that. Study. Oh yeah, I am. Mars says we don't know shit. I'm just saying we don't know shit. That's why when doctors you get a diagnosis, the other doctor gives you another one. They say right away, they get a second opinion. Well, okay, right away you're telling me it's an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> 
one never matches the first. We're guessing. Third. We don't know a lot about how the body works. So how do vaccines fit in with, I don't know, all the new chemicals that have, there's thousands of new chemicals, pollutants, irritants. We didn't used to have all this corn syrup in our bodies, antibiotics. It could be any combination. So I'm a little cautious. <laughs> That's true. In the meat in there, the Twitterverse is not happy, apparently. Oh, my God. According to Forbes. And the last clip from Real Time with Bill Maher, metals and baby food, which we talked about a few weeks ago. Okay. Dr. Gordon, how concerned are you about the new report that says 95% of baby food contains toxic metals? It, it does. I tell people to please make their own baby food. <laughs> I don't trust the manufacturers of children's products, whether it's pharmaceuticals or baby food. And I, oh, I worry a lot about. Oh yeah, he's slamming farmers. Oh yeah, he's. Too. Oh no, in this interview, oh, <laughs> remind me on my point. Twenty-five second of this clip about about the the new vaccine laws, which have taken the decision about vaccines away from parents. Initially gave it to me, and now there's going to be a government committee in California deciding whether or not you medically qualify for vaccine exemption. And those oh, laws are gosh. going to spread oh, yeah. across the United States. That Perhaps is dangerous. Slow them down. But slow them down. What the heck? And the sheep not applauding. Okay. Because, <laughs> so, uh, you know, most of his audience yeah. are like, what the hell is this guy saying? Vaccines are good. Shoot me up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And they actually talked about in the interview how we hate the pharmaceutical industry for the opioid crisis and all this stuff. But when it comes to vaccines, nope, they're holy. Trust them. Yeah. And they actually talk about that in the interview how we always. Point. It's the stupidest <laughs> thing. We, we say it too. Yeah. It's, but... Wait, are they our enemy or our friends? Uh, yeah. Well, I always tell people, research for yourself, be skeptical, mm -hmm. ask questions. Yep, because we're not anti-vaccine at all. Yeah. Vaccines are extremely important. But you should, again, do your own research. Check out different vaccine schedules. Yeah, you know. And well, if you want, you could be, you can participate in research if you want. Vaccine <laughs> research. ABC 11 Eyewitness News. People do crazy things for a little extra cash, but how about getting intentionally infected with the flu? Scientists from the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases are doing that, giving people influenza A on purpose. That's the famous H1N1 drug. It's for research purposes, we're told. Participants get paid about $3,300. Researchers want to closely monitor the symptoms those people have to better understand how the virus works and develop ways to control it. If you want to give it a shot or a nasal spray, you can do that now at Duke University, where they have a trial underway. Well, luckily, we just learned that the nasal spray is ineffective, so yeah. sign up for that. I'll sign up for that one. 3300 bucks to shoot some crap in my nose that doesn't work. All right. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I'll pass. A little too risky there. 3300 bucks. <laughs> that's kind of sad. Yeah. Think about it. Because who's going to bite on that? People who uh, need money? Yeah, so targeting the poor, poor as usual. once again. Damn it. I tried to leave us on a happy note. And I couldn't do it. I couldn't leave. I couldn't make a joke. There's no joke to be made. It's just sad. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you ready to roll out? Yeah, let's do it. All right. We record Healthy Talk Show live on Mondays and Thursdays at 8 p.m. <laughs> Pacific Standard Time. That's 3 a.m. UTC over at HealthyTalkShow.com forward slash live. Please help us financially produce the show by heading over to HealthyTalkShow.com slash support. Your financial contribution will ensure we remain unbiased, commercial-free, and help us pay for things like rent and all our other bills. Our show is value for value. If you found value in this show, please provide value back by visiting HealthyTalkShow.com slash support. Another way to provide value is feedback, questions, comments, concerns. AskHealthyTalkShow.com. That's our email. Give us a phone call, 509-878-3229 and healthytalkshow.com forward slash social for all of our social media links. Love and light. Love and light.